Angela Cherby, Fred from Radio from the London Film Festival. I'm very really glad to have here Rashad and Nestor Green, director of Premature. Good afternoon. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Listen, Rashad, your film is a coming of age story, but it's not like a regular coming of age. It's because your lead character is a very powerful and strong girl. <laughs> and why did you choose this specific quality of a lead character to tell the story? And then, and then we'll talk about the story going on. Sure. Well, I had a wonderful co-collaborator in Zora Howard who helped write the script as well as star as Ayana in the film. And, you know, we both are from Harlem. She's born and raised in Harlem, and I've been in Harlem for the last 20 years. And I'm used to, you know, a certain attitude. And um, when, you know, when seeing young women um, approached by, uh, by young men in Harlem or... or or, or vice versa, sometimes they are the ones who are doing the approaching. You know, they're very, very strong characters. You know, this, this, you've got a New York, di it's a very direct and strong personality um, where when we start the film, she's not necessarily open to love. You know, mm -hmm. she encounters a young man who is obviously very interested in her and she's got her walls up. You know, she's got her defenses up. New York hardens you to some extent, you know, so um, it's, it's through admiration and, and, and because he's a little older, he's a little bit different from all the knuckleheads that she's been dealing with all her life, um, that he's able to break down those walls and open her up to a true, to true love. But do you think that this is because he's older than her? They, so he's more able to trigger her and, and, and to help her grow? Well, I think he's able to in, engage and unlock her, her, her intellect you know, mm. so because of that, you know, they're able to understand each other on, on, on a higher level, on a higher plane. Mm. You know, a lot of times, you know, I think when, when you first encounter love, it can be, it can be physical, it can be immature. Uh, here is the first time where she's really able to let her guards down because she feels like she's met an equal. Mm -hmm. Listen, your mm, filmmaking here is uh, very naturalistic and very familiar, if I can say so. It's like uh, uh, there is you, you stay with her, and the point of view is always hers. Mm -hmm. It never changes throughout the whole film. Uh, this was a specific choice that you and your co-writer had, or it was something that came up while you were making the film because you thought that that was more working, more working better? Well, I think, you know... Um we were we were inspired by a lot a lot of films evidently, and what we wanted to do differently in this film is that so many love stories are told through the perspective of the man, and because she'd be starring in the film as Ayana, I wanted to keep it in her perspective both both in the script stage and and also in the film itself. I think some of some of the best cinema is told through one character's point of view. So. You know, like like a blue is the warmest color, or girlhood. And these films that we were inspired by, I very much wanted to keep it in her point of view because we're not used to seeing that. Mm. Yeah. Listen, uh, reading a lot of interviews, a lot of sorry reviews of your film, which were all great actually, by the way, they were saying that there, there was like uh, many uh, recalls to poetic justice. Yeah, I, I. Do you think it's right or not? I mean, I, I, we did not watch Poetic Justice while we were writing this. Um, this is the first time I've heard it because I didn't read any of the reviews. Um, <laughs> so now you know that they say that. In the, in the screen, I mean, obviously, um, the two characters are young black women who are poets. Outside of that, I would have to say that from what I remember of the film, it is a drastic departure from from what Poetic Justice is, is not to say that we were not influenced uh, by films from the 90s. Uh, Love Jones specifically and Love and Basketball, these were films that we did watch mm -hmm. and embrace, but we also watched films of Woody Allen. We watched films of, Li of Richard Linklater. You know, I think because it's a, a young black love story, in the, the automatic, there's an automatic compar comparison mm -hmm. to other young black love stories, yeah. but we were influenced by all cultures from all over the world. We watched love stories from, from, from France and Japan 
and you know and the states as well so you know um i i i i welcome the comparison but anybody who sees the film will probably um draw their own conclusion what how was the process of, of writing the film with your co-writer how did you work together which was like the mechanism that, that linked to the creation of the film well it was inspired um our collaboration was inspired by uh a film that we made together It's over 10 years ago, also called Premature. I uh, wrote and directed a short film about a young woman who brings, who gets pregnant and brings her baby to term and how she has to deal with it within her community and her family. And I cast Zora when she was 14 years old as the lead in that film. And the film went everywhere. It was wound up on HBO and played over 80 film festivals internationally, and it was a hit. Um, we've been talking ever since uh, about uh, collaborating again this time as a writing team and it was it was wonderful to to create with someone who i knew very well i've known zora since she was 11 years old so it was like fighting with a brother or sister yeah. but because you know because you need to bounce sometimes writing can be such a lonely process. It was great to, to, to bounce ideas off of someone as opposed to just the wall. Um, and I, I also because she had such insight to the character, she obviously was a young black woman in Harlem. She is also a spoken word artist um, that I had insight into a young woman's mind and life and soul and spirit that I might not have had had I not had a collaborator. My last question is about Harlem, actually, because Harlem is there is like the the additional character of the film. How did you move in, inside of Harlem to get the, the right Harlem that you want us to see? We didn't ask permission. We basically stole everything that we wanted. <laughs> um, you know, uh, whether it was uh, on a train station with trains passing by or... Uh, you know, by the river. You know, New York is a very film-friendly city, mm -hmm. but obviously there are some restrictions. Like, you're not, not necessarily just allowed to go onto the subway and film, but we did it anyway because we didn't have a lot of resources available to us. We used our apartments. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we asked for favors from family and friends and local businesses, and we just cobbled together you know, a movie in, in by any means necessary. You know, we, we, we had production woes, you know, as any independent film encounters. Um, but because we had a, a strong network of support uh, from family and friends in Harlem, uh, we were able to uh, finish it in style. Well, thank you very much. Thanks a lot to Rashad Ernesto Green, director of Premature, for having been with us, with Fred Film Radio from the London Festival, and Angela Cherby for Fred the Festival Insider. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Come check it out in theaters. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you always do that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, picked up by Signature Entertainment. It'll be in theaters hopefully before the holidays in the UK.